Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It truly is a great day to be a Mountaineer wherever you may be. Thanks so much for being with us, for those of you that are here in person, and for those listening in on the Mountaineer Sports Network and the various social media platforms. We are here today. It is an historic day in the history of West Virginia University as we formally introduce our 35th head football coach. Neil Brown will take over Mountaineer program that currently is 14th all-time in the nation in college football victories, and obviously he will have a state behind him here at the state's land-grant institution. Coming up this morning, we'll hear from the two men responsible for bringing Neil here to Morgantown. And as you probably all know, this is an active recruiting period in college football. And early on, it appears that both Shane and President Gee have landed the most blue chip of coaches in the nation, and we are delighted to have him with us here today. Would you please welcome WVU President E. Gordon Gee. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're honored to have everyone here. This is a very special day, um, and it's a very special moment. Uh, and I just say this to, uh, to the wonderful Brown family. We are, we are an institution of family. Um, West Virginia is a place of families. Uh, West Virginia is a place that believes in um, its institution and its university. In fact, we in many ways represent the hopes and dreams of every West Virginian. And uh, our football program, our basketball programs, our athletic program in general uh, really do carry the flag of West Virginia and have done so successfully for a long period of time. And so today is a very special day because of the fact that we have a new flag character. A very special one. Uh, I can tell you that uh, when we had an opportunity to speak uh, with Rook and uh, and with the coach, uh, uh, very very infrequently do you know what is right. Uh, very infrequently do you know uh, how uh, this is going to work. We saw it. We believed in it. He believed in us. Brooke believed in us. Uh, we had a most wonderful conversation, and for that we are we are grateful. Um, West Virginia University is a place of purpose. I tell everyone, if you don't believe in purpose, if you don't believe that we have a special calling, if you don't believe in the ministry of West Virginia and its university, then please don't come here. This is a place of purpose, and we're also a place of inspiration. And today, that is what we're celebrating. We're celebrating family. We're selling 1.8 million West Virginians. We're celebrating West Virginians around the world. Uh, who take great pride in this state, and we're celebrating uh, the newest member of our family. So, Coach, welcome to you and welcome to your family. I'm not very good at babysitting, I want you to know that. I'm, I'm a grandfather, I, I, I go for a visit, then I Uber back to the hotel, so, that, so that's good. But we are, we are honored to have you here, and, um, and we're honored to have all of your family here. So thank you very much for making this decision. Um, this is a special day for West Virginia. Please now welcome WVU Athletic Director Shane Lyons. Thank you, Tony, and thank you for everyone to be, uh, being here today. As Dr. Gee said, it's an exciting day to be able to introduce a new football coach in West Virginia's Mountaineer football history. Uh, it's also exciting to begin a new chapter in West Virginia football history. As we said, as we started this process, we were obviously looking for a coach who could come in here and fit us as an institution. I do want to recognize Brooke, Adlin, Angeli, and Dax to the family. Uh, as Dr. Gee said, this was a family affair as we started this, and definitely they bring every quality in the family we could think of. I want to thank Dr. Gee for the, the process. Uh, we moved very swiftly on this, his support in making this happen um, in, a, in a quick manner. We worked uh, hand in hand to make this happen as swiftly as we could. I also want to thank uh, Bill Wilmoth and David Alvarez, uh, the chair and vice chair of the board of directors, for their support. Also from Dr. Gee's team, a number of people that we had conversations with in the process for their support along the way as well. From athletics, um, my right hand, Kelly Zinn, 
Um, could not do this without her and her work behind the scenes of, of the day-to-day -day, uh, grunt work in the trenches, finding out about coaches, the information, along with Steve Urias, who's not here today, um, you know, working with us in the interview process, a number of other senior staff members who made this happen. So it was truly a, a team effort, and, and I thank them for their hard work and efforts in this process. As I entered this search, I was looking for a city and head coach with experience. Obviously, Neil had that with four years of experience at Troy. I was looking for the fit and culture for our university, uh, somebody that embraced our values and missions, not only the, uh, from the athletic department, but for the university as a whole. Somebody who had an emphasis on the student-athlete experience. Uh, you'll hear Coach talk about the student-athlete experience and the total student-athlete's experience. It's not all about the playing field, it's off the playing field as well. And to make sure these guys are having fun, but they're growing socially as well as academically. I was looking for a coach with a proven record of competitive, uh, competitive success. Uh, coach had a 35-16 and 16 record in a four-year period at, at Troy. He was 31-8 and eight in the last three years, uh, tied with Central Florida for the best record in the nation among the group of five. He had a conference championship and three bowl wins. So obviously the competitive success box was checked. I wanted a coach who had emphasis on academics and NCAA compliance. I needed a quality person with a strong work ethic. And every box that I talked about was being checked by Neil Brown. As we entered the interview process and, and had a chance to sit down with him in person, it was very clear and evident that he was going to be the next West Virginia football coach. Uh, we talked, and the interview lasted about seven hours. Uh, we talked about a number of things through those seven hours. The brand of football that he plays. Um, you know, he likes to throw the ball. Uh, has a strong focus on the running game. His teams have been known for their defense as much as their offense. Uh, his team plays with a chip on their shoulder with a blue-collar mentality, which fits us perfectly. So we talked about a lot of those things. Uh, we talked about, you know, his, his passion for the student-athlete, his passion for the game. Uh, we also had a chance for, for Brooke to join us in the, in the last couple hours of the interview. Coach, she was the closer. Uh, I'd say that. But uh, it was evident that they, that they wanted to be here at West Virginia, wanted to be our football coach, wanted to be the first family of football. Um, so it, it was evident that we were definitely on the right track. And I talked about the process. And the process began a long time before uh, the last week or so. You know, we had systems in place to review coaches. I had my list and always kept it up to date of coaches. Uh, what we watched and listened from afar. And we were prepared. We had done our homework. And now that, that allowed us to work quickly and, and effectively and efficiently in naming our next head football coach. After we had a chance to, to come back um, to Morgantown and sit down and debrief the next morning real quickly, you know, it was really came evident, and I, I told uh, a staff that the great state of West Virginia, our alumni and fans, our department and university is going to love this guy. You know, the last week, or almost a week since Saturday, when we made the official announcement, I can tell you that Mountaineer Nation is once again energized. Now, Neil, Coach, uh, and uh, we're glad to have you. If you and President Gee would come up front. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and privilege to introduce to you West Virginia University's 35th head football coach, Neil Brown.
key university uh, individuals, boosters. Uh, appreciate y'all taking time and being here. What an honor and, and what a privilege it is to stand before you today as the head football coach at West Virginia University. You hear a lot at these press conferences, but it's, it's important to me to tell you why it's such a privilege. We've had a lot of success over the last few years at Troy. That's why I'm here. And when you, when, you, when you have success, it creates opportunities. And, and other schools want to talk about jobs. And when you get those opportunities, you get an opportunity to find out about that school's culture, about their administration's vision, and the fan base's passion for the program. Culture, vision, passion. Those are the three things that have always been very important to me and Brooke, who I'll introduce here in just a second. Those are three criteria that have factored into each move we made and every opportunity we've evaluated over the years. When I think about culture, when I think about vision, when I think about passion, I think about Coach Neely and the incredible legacy he left here, over two decades of success. And I appreciate the time he spent welcoming me to town and to this university on Sunday afternoon. He provided great insight, and I appreciate that. I think about the 14th winningest program in all of college football. Wow. I think about 15 conference championships. I think about the flying WV and the hardworking, blue-collar people of West Virginia that that WV represents. I think about country roads, and I think about one of the best environments of all of college football. West Virginia is culture. It is vision, and it is passion. That's a great fit. It fits my DNA. I'm grateful for Dr. Gee, Shane Lyons, Kelly Zinn, the Board of Governors, for believing in me and giving me the opportunity to lead this great program. Their entire team was incredible throughout this process. They were everything you look for from both an athletics and a university perspective. The alignment from Dr. Gee to Shane and his team was evident. Dr. Gee, your vision for this incredible university is both crystal clear and it's invigorating. <coughs> When you spend time with Dr. Gee, you come away with a deep appreciation for West Virginia and a sincere belief that nothing is impossible. Shane, it is, it is clear you bleed gold and blue. From our first conversation, you were consistent in your message. West Virginia is a special place where we can accomplish great things. I look forward to working with both Dr. Gee and Shane to make the people of this great state proud of how we represent them on a daily basis. I want, to, I want to recognize and introduce a few people that are very important to me that probably define me. Um, my wife, Brooke, who I'll talk about here in a second. Our children, Adeline, Ansley, and Dax. Um, probably shouldn't look at Brooke, so I'll talk, we'll talk about her. Um, <laughs> but, um, Brooke, probably more than anybody, understands what this moment means. Um, been my side, been by my side through the ups and the downs um, of this profession. Consummate coach's wife, um, and I wouldn't be standing here today without her. Um, she's a head coach at home, um, but she also will have a prominent role in our program and be very visible in, in uh, the Morgantown community. My sister Beth is here. Recent law school graduate, proud of her. Um, my parents, Tom, Peggy, and then my in-laws, Morris and Pat Stewart. All four teachers, educators, and at the heart, I think that's who, who we are as well. I also wouldn't be standing here today without the players, coaches, administration, and fans at Troy University. <coughs> we experienced a lot of success at Troy. And because they gave their all every day. Dr. Jack Hawkins and Jeremy McLean, our athletic director, <coughs> bought into our vision and were completely aligned with what we wanted to accomplish. The players sacrificed individual goals 
in the interest of the team, and I'll forever be grateful for the relationships and the memories that we all made in Troy. On Sunday night, I stood on this stage, honestly looking at a group that was probably bigger, faster, and stronger than the group I'm looking at now. Uh, they better be anyway, they better be. But what I told them is that West Virginia, we were going to be about three things. Number one, we were going to develop young men. I love football, I'm passionate. Athletics has given me every opportunity that I've ever had in my life. But I think it's a, I think it's a tool to develop young men. Number two, we're going to graduate student athletes and set them up for their future endeavors. And number three, we're going to win football games. We accomplished, we accomplished these goals by being a player first program. We build a program around our student athletes. They are why we are here, why we do what we do. This program will not be about me. From our coaching staff, to our academic support, through strength and conditioning, all our support areas, anyone that touches this program, our job is to help our student athletes develop in all phases. To whom, to whom much is given, much is required. That holds true with Mountaineer football. We will provide our student athletes with every resource they need to be successful, both in the classroom and on the field. That said, our, our expectations for our student athletes is gonna be extremely high. We will ensure that they carry themselves in a manner that makes us all proud. We will all be accountable to each other, this program, and this university. We will be disciplined on and off the field. This is not coach speak, this is a program mandate from day one. We'll have fun. Um, I think it's important to have fun. It's a game. They talk about playing. Playing football. I want our players to look forward to coming into the, to the Milan Push Car Center. That doesn't mean we won't work hard, we will. But we're going to enjoy ourselves as we go through the process of getting better. There have been exciting former players that should be a visible part of our program. I want them to know that they're welcome here. Jeff Hostetler, who's doing wonderful work with the, with the Children's <coughs> Hospital. Mark Bulger, who reached out to me on Twitter. Tavon Austin, Major Harris, Pat Harris, Bruce Irvin, Daryl Talley, just to name a few. I want all former Mountaineer football players, y'all come see us. Please be a part of what is going to be the next chapter of Mountaineer football. Competition will be key. Our student athletes will be expected to compete every day in everything. I'm talking about grades, all season, practice effort, in-game performance, everything. I want our staff competing with that same energy and intensity as well. Competition breeds success. Those that possess great competitive character will strive here. We're going to recruit, but not only recruit, we're going to develop. Championship football programs are built through recruiting and development. A program is only as good as its players. I'm from this area. I've spent years recruiting this area. I know the type of players that are our footprint. They will know who we are and what we're about. Our coaching staff will be active. They will be visible. We have a tremendous, and I'll say that, tremendous product to sell here. And our staff will, will be expected to work extremely hard.